Welcome back to Cure the Common Game. Today in deck number 905, we're going to talk about Mr. Orpheo. Now, for black, red, green, we get a Rhino Warrior. 2-4. Whenever you attack, double target creature's power until end of turn. Now, this is an attack trigger, so... Um, if you have got play the Relentless Assaults, the extra combat steps, those are outstanding. Uh, in retrospect, I probably should have done the, you know, the dragon that gives you the extra combat and then the dragon that uh, gives you mana enough mana to activate it. So that is probably the correct way to build it. But I went another direction. I went with plus one, plus one counters. Because I figured with things like, I don't know, um, where's it at? We're, we're going to strike fear into Chris's heart with the steel or the hero's bane. Uh, because I've won one counters, you get to double them, and, and then whenever you attack, you just double its power. So, anyway, let's look into our mana fixing, shall we? We are playing three colors. Um, I wanted to play as many creatures as possible, but I still had to have enough land because, you know, hydras and whatnot. So, Rampant Growth, Lanoir Elf, Fertilid fits the bill perfectly. Uh, it, it deals with 1-1 counters. It gets proliferated by the Evolution Sage. It, it, it's just perfect. Uh, Leafkin Avenger fits perfectly. Ranger's Path, Commander's Fear, Dreamstone Hedron. I like the Leyline Prowler, because a lot of times, even if you don't need it for the mana, well, first off, three mana for an any color mana rock is what we're used to paying. Yeah, it's sick, but it does have Death Touch and Life Link. A lot of people don't swing into Death Touch. It is a very big deterrent. Spectral Searchlight, Golgari Signet, Paradise Druid. I like the Zerta Druid. It does bring the removal, but, you know, I like it. Uh, Elvish Mystic. Elves of Deep Shadow. Everflowing Chalice is a good one to proliferate, cultivate, and the Gruel Signet. Now, um, we do have some card draw here. I mean, it, it's weird how greens become the card draw color. But when it comes to creatures, yeah. You know, Elemental Bond checks power three. Garrick's Pack Leader checks power three. Garrick's Uprising checks power four. And Inspiring Call checks for 1-1 one, one counters. Um, speaking of 1-1 one, one counters, we've got the Corpse Jack Menace to double those up. Yes, this would be a great doubling season deck. Primal, all, all that stuff. If you've got it, run it. But let's look at our actual creatures, what we're <laughs> what we're going to double. First off, Kresh got a reprint, and I'm proud of it. Uh, another creature dies. That's I love it. It, it gets... 1-1 one, one counters equal that creature's power. It makes your removal pretty beautiful. Now, the Aki Battle Squad um, modified, you know, because 1-1 one, one creatures, or creatures with 1-1 one, one counters on them count as modified. So, getting that extra attack step in there. This was the only one I had. Rishkar. Um, hey, you know, just it passes out two counters. Chameleon Colossus doesn't work with counters. Uh, it, it doesn't deal with them, but it does deal with, hey, I'm really, really big, and I like to get doubled. Uh, Spearbreaker Behemoth, making them indestructible, just in case you can... Because uh, I figure the restriction of power 5 or greater is probably not that big a, of a restriction in this particular deck. Champion of the Lamb Holds, amazing. Tuscar, uh Captain gives them all trample. Siege Behemoth. As long as it's attacking for each creature you control, you may have that creature assign its combat damage that weren't blocked. So they all have uh, essentially super trample. Um, and this is hexproof. Yes, it's seven mana. That's not that big a deal. Um, but that can be just a game winning scenario with a big enough creature. Um, Spirit Monger. Deals combat damage to, or deals damage to a creature. It gets a counter. It can regenerate. It, it, it can change colors. Spirit Monger was a beast back in the day. I mean, I guess it's still a beast now. Anyway, uh, Paragon of Modernity. I guess that's how you say that word. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be three colors, and 
you know, it's going to get the counter. I wanted some kind of flying blocker. <laughs> That's why it's in there. The Forgotten Ancient. A player casts a spell. You know how silly that sounds? Oh, it's so good. Oh, Wildwood Scourge. We're getting into Hydra territory now is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, Hungering Hydra. Steelbane Hydra. You know, the last time I played Steelbane Hydra, it was late in the game. It was a five-player game. And there was not a single artifact or enchantment on the board that I, besides mine. I was like... I guess I'll just bash with this 8-8. Eight eight. <laughs> Gallagher Eaters. It's not bad. We're going to have creatures in her. It gets counters, treasures, life, whatever you need. Neverwinter Hydra. Roll XD6. Now, I love rolling XD6. <laughs> Agitator Ant. Get some goad action out there. And then the Grime Gorger. You get to exile cards from graveyards and it gets counters. Uh, enchantment wise, you know, we've got like the grafted growth. It's kind of rampy. Uh, it does pop a counter out there. Fight rigging. Now, for three mana, you're only getting one plus one counter each combat. But at least you get it the turn you cast it because you can cast it during your first main phase, go to combat and get the counter, right? And then, you know, you can play the card, whatever. But even after you play the card, you're still getting that counter every upkeep. Rhythm of the Wild, because why not have free plus one, plus one counters? If you want the haste, that's fine. But eh, you're just getting an extra counter. Um, and then the Invigorating Hot Springs. Modified creatures you control have haste. That's pretty sweet for the the Hydras out there to just automatically give them haste. Uh, now, <laughs> the Dragon's Road of Tarkir. I know it's kind of silly. It's a lot of win more. But the reason why it's in there is because that trample word. Uh, it is a repeatable way to not only, one, make your creatures ridiculously big, and then, two, it gives them trample. Of course, there's the overrun. Now, I really like Mage Slayer. Apparently, everybody likes Mage Slayer because uh, it it has uh, it it's not the bulk uncommon it used to be. So let's look at our, our removal, uh, of which there's a bunch. We're gonna start off with the creature, Mister Big Boy, Terastodon. I like Hunter's Edge. You know, it gets a counter and then it bites. It's not fight because they don't fight back. It bites. So. Um, but a lot of those cards that when a creature dies, like crash. Okay. We got doom blade, putrefy, abrupt decay, naturalize, wind graces judgment. I have been on the receiving end of this one a lot lately. Uh, violent ultimatum. Yeah, I know there's a new one that's like destroy all target player stuff, but I didn't have that one. Um, uh, return to nature. Jun Charm. But I want to talk about Lava Lanch. Because this is... You pick a person to have a really bad day. I mean, it's just one player. Target player and all their creatures. Bam. Right? That is... <laughs> I told you not to attack me. And now all your stuff has to die. Uh, but I like it and... We don't use it a lot because uh, of the three color restriction on it, but it, it is kind of kind of neat when you can use it. Um, start with our non basic lands, Daragaza's Caldera. Now this is an old one. Uh, the layer lands didn't hadn't gotten a lot of love, but we're in all of those five color combinations. So uh, people whip out your plane shift binders. Uh, the Command Tower, Terramorphic Expanse, Tramway Station. Now, I like these new tap duels um, just simply because late game, I've been sacking them to draw that card. You know, it's not bad. Kazandu Refuge, Tainted Wood, Ockham Refuge, Hissing Quagmire. Here again, I kind of wanted, you know, more creatures. Uh, Timber Gorge. 
Bloodfell Caves, Racer's Ring, Golgari Guildgate, Cinder Barons, Rakdos Guildgate, Jund Panorama, Gruul Guildgate, Evolving Wilds, Savage Lands, Jungle Hollow, Riveteers Overlook. I love the safe houses um, because all five of them are actually safe houses for the family. So that's, that's what I've started calling them is the safe houses. Um, I like them really good in landfall. Rugged Highlands. And then lastly is Zatora's Proving Ground. And that is it for Mr. Orpheo. Um, just a plus one counter. I mean, and yeah, I know the plus one counter enchantment. I, I could have gone a lot deeper with that um, had I had the cards I would have. But that is what we have got for today. Ooh, kind of high. So we're going to go put 905 over here on the wall. Getting it done. Uh, and that is it for today. Uh, hope you all have a good day. And uh, I do appreciate you all. Thank you so much, and we are going to go ahead and shuffle and cut.